time. I'm Isabelle Reza from the Réunion des Musées Nationaux Grand Palais. So, um, unlike uh, most of the people who have been talking here for the past two days, I'm don't work for, I don't work for a cool startup. Uh, I work for a, a company that uh, was founded uh, originally in the 19th century, and I'm building an API anyhow. Uh, so, uh, the, in 1895 was created in France the Réunion des Musées Nationaux um, with a mission which was to acquire works of art for uh, national museums in France. Uh, over the decades, its missions grew to new missions which was producing exhibitions, publishing books, running bookstores, uh, running uh, guided tours in museums. And in 1946, the RMN, so the Réunion des Musées Nationaux is never called like this, we call it the RMN, it's much shorter. So the RMN started taking images of uh, works of art in national museums. In 2010, this old lady uh, merges with another uh, very well-known institution in France, which is the Grand Palais. Even if you don't live in Paris, you might know this building. It's a big glass-roofed building on the Champs-Élysées where the Réunion des Musées Nationaux had been organizing major exhibitions for over 40 years. Um, and at the moment, in 2014, we have about 800,000 images of works of art for French national collections and beyond. So this old lady got much younger by got, getting married in 2010, but every day is getting younger and younger. Uh, we manage lots of websites, mobile apps, and we produce MOOCs. We just released one, which is getting quite good press. It's, over, it's about impressionisms. And we're not, when we're not testing Google Glass in our exhibitions, we test guided tours with robots for children in the hospital who can't come to the exhibitions. So, you know, we're having fun uh, with digital. In 2012, where, where, when my project started, we had about 600,000 images um, from 90 different museums and archive funds, and we had a need to rethink the way we manage and distribute those images. Our aims were basically to make our data more available. Available for us and for the people. We wanted to make them available widely on the internet without losing their trace. We wanted to make them available for new apps and websites and available for needs we would have but didn't know yet. But most of all, we wanted to make them available for the museums so that they would be able to show them on their museum websites and in, on their apps. We also wanted to enrich the data around the images. Um, we wanted uh, to make the database available in more languages. Obviously, we are talking here about 90 museums and archive funds, and to, say, to cite just three of them, we've got the Louvre, Orsay, and Versailles, and obviously this heritage, go, this heritage goes far beyond French-speaking countries. The database is, some of it is, trans is translated into English, but we wanted to make it really multilingual. We want also to give our public more context about the images, and we also want in return to know more about the use of those images uh, which was made on the web through interaction data. And we thought that might be a way also building an API to test new, new ways to, de um, to deliver those images. So we have now our new toy. And we've got a, a nice API, it's an alpha version. Uh, we are going to build a website on top of the API, and so that, would sh that should see the light in the spring. And uh, a bit later on, you should be able to see our website, which will be called the Phototech. This Phototech, you might be able to see it as a white label website, which will be um, on the museum website on each of them. So I'm going to show you very quickly what the API look li looks like. So you see we've had, we have a nice introduction. And uh, it, it respects Ori Peckelman's uh, 333 rule, if you know about it. If you don't come back next year to the API days. And uh, so this is what the console look li looks like at the moment. So, you know, you've got works of art, you've got 
authors, images obviously, and users, selections, and you can also have a look at the database through locations is which museums we're talking about, the historical periods, we've got keywords, techniques, paintings, photography, sculpture, and so on. And very quickly, if I have a few seconds left, if I look up the works, and, you know, say, I enter a word like Picasso, just to have a look. So I'm just, uh, uh, it's just a very simple Picasso as a, you know, um, general request. We've got about 800, uh, 8,000 works that have something to do with Picasso. The first one is uh, a picture of his mother. We've got quite a lot of information about it, which museums it's, uh, it's is kept in. And you can also see that we've got some data in many languages. So that's it. I just wanted to have a, a very quick thing. Uh, we'll be hosting a couple of developers' events. So stay tuned. Thank you. Fastest uh, picture that we work, right? So, second one? Give me the mic. 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 So her, the tweet that will be able to uh, that will be able to retweet for her to win will have the number one on it. So number one, it will be the order of this. You will have her title, the all lady, the all news lady toys, something uh, like that, and and you will have her Twitter handle. So she will be able to check how many times she has been retweeted. So no cheating. At least if she she is guilty, but it was it would be weird. Yes, and you don't have to buy retweets on Mechanical Turk or something. <laughs> good try, good try. Yeah, you can ask for retweets. You can ask for retweets. <laughs> Clicker works. Oh, yep. Great. Just I make I put the counter because. Let's go. Go. Okay, ready. So here we go for six minutes about uh, resilience. But uh, before, just a few words about me. I'm uh, David Martin. I'm consulting director for uh, Ipon, a French IT company. So let's go. I'm sure uh, everybody here knows how to build a good API uh, using the right media types, uh, making the most of hypermedia relations. But uh, the real question is, are we ready to face huge popularity for our APIs? Are we, are we ready to face two critical business responsibility? In other words, is our API ready to scale up, of course, and down, and gracefully deal with problems? That's the main topic. So, uh, maybe the solution is as simple as deploying many instances of our API in the cloud. Something like that. So, that's great. We have found a solution for our resilience problem. Is it the end of my talk? Not yet. Life is not that simple, in fact. Your API is not that simplistic. In fact, this is a more complex application. And maybe just having many instances behind the load balancer is not enough. So what? Maybe you can just think you won't have any problem and cross your fingers. Good luck with that. Or you can, you can just build your own solution. Or, third solution, you can just rely on existing platforms that are already used. I don't know for you, but I clearly prefer number three. So it's time for me to introduce one of these solutions. It's based on Netflix stack. 
In fact, I will just present four projects among 50 projects. Just a tip to remember, obviously the cloud will be helpful because the cloud can bring scalability we need. But the question behind is, is our API ready to embrace the cloud? So like I said before, things are not that simple. Your API is a complex application. It may have one or many dependencies. Uh, these dependencies uh, have many instances. You have to know which instances are up and running when you need them, and you have to know how to load balance requests among them. So you can end up with such an architecture. But is it really what you want? So let me introduce the first component in the Netflix stack, Eureka. Maybe some of, you, some of you knows this component. Eureka is in fact two components. The first one is a service registry, and the second one is a client component. The client component is embedded in your application, and it, it registers your API state in the, in the registry. It also renews periodically the registration, and third point, and maybe the most important, it fetch server registry in a local memory. So when using Eureka, if a client fails, of course, the registry will unregister it. But the most important part is, if the server registry fails, the clients can still work with their local copy of the registry. OK, but where are the load balancers? Here comes Ribbon, the second component. Ribbon is an interprocess communication component, which has built-in load balancer capabilities. And a thing that is cool, Ribbon can use Eureka client data. OK, but we can face some other kind of problem. Maybe a dependency can just slow down due to network latency. How to handle this kind of error? Here is the third component, which is called Istrix. Istrix is a circuit breaker implementation. In fact, it will wrap your request and protect it against any kind of failure. Let me just show you, maybe it's hard to, to read. Istrix wrap your request. This is the blue uh, square. If it's in short circuit mode, it will directly call the fallback method. If not, it will call the run method, which is in fact your request. If it succeeds, everything is okay. The response is just return. If it fails, the fallback method will be called. So are we done yet? No. Resilience is also the ability to cope with change. And you may want to decouple your public API from your internal services. So here comes the last component, which is Zool. Zool is an edge service application. This is the public face of your API. It's a kind uh, of getaway service with cool features. It will act as a filter chain. And uh, with Zool, you will be able to handle authentication and security, dynamically route requests based on your own parameters, serve static content, of course, protect your system with threshold. OK, that's enough for now, because I have only six minutes. So just to sum up, here is a wall picture. This is the kind of architecture you can have using these components. Your entry point will be Zool implementations. Zool can use Ribbon and or Restrix to communicate with your internal APIs. Your internal APIs can use also Ribbon or Restrix to, communi to communicate with their dependencies. All of these components will use Eureka Client to communicate with the service registry. OK, that's really short. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. Yeah, because for a keynote, you need to respect the time. Yeah, so actually, it didn't work so, so uh, uh, for these two days. But so we want one that no, how to handle mine. Yeah, so the next one, so. Yeah. Yeah, so it's you. Let's go. So six minutes, you can do less, 
No more. Thanks very much. Go. Okay, hi, thanks very much for hanging around. So I'm Graham Steele, I'm the CEO and co-founder of a, a cool Paris startup called uh, CryptoSense. Uh, and so what do we do in 20 seconds? So uh, if you were at the security talk today, maybe you're now thinking, oh, I'd quite like to get some uh, HSMs involved around the back end of my API, or maybe I'd like to get two-factor authentication working, uh, but that looks kind of complex. So what CryptoSense does is we sell software and services to help you do that, basically. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Today I'm going to talk about crypto on the client. Okay, so crypto in a web browser, basically. Now, why would you want to do crypto in a web browser? Well, maybe you've got clients who are really sensitive about security, they want to encrypt big files, this kind of thing. The problem is, during, doing crypto on a web browser at the moment uh, is very, very bad. Why is it bad? Well, first of all, there is no crypto support, so you're going to have to fetch a big, fat JavaScript library from somewhere to do your crypto. So now your attack surface, right? The, the number of things that could go wrong has just, just become huge. Uh, secondly, your performance is going to be dreadful. And that's a real shame because these days you can do things like encryption and signature really fast. There are little instructions at the processor level that will do encryption for you. But if you do it by shoving arrays around in JavaScript, it's going to be really, really slow. And that's really bad for your user experience. Uh, and finally, there's nowhere to put the keys. Okay, and this is a really big thing. In crypto, it's all about keeping those keys secure. If your keys get out, that's the end of the game. And at the moment, in JavaScript, there's nowhere else to put the keys than, than in the DOM or something. And as soon as somebody runs a little bit of nasty JavaScript somewhere, uh, you're dead. Uh, so this is, this is really bad. So the W3C is going to come to the rescue. So yeah, you, you'll look very convinced. Um, so there's going to be a crypto API standardized by the W3C. Uh, all the main browser vendors are on board, so you can already try this out. You can go to your Chrome user, you can get a little uh, version of Chrome that's got it in. You can download uh, plugins and what have you for the other browsers. Um, it's going to give you a way to do things like encryption and signature and all that good stuff natively in, on the platform where your browser is running. Uh, and it's entering CR this week. What does that mean? It's entering uh, candidate recommendation stage. So what does that mean? That means it's going to be available really soon, really, really soon. Um, however, not everything is solved. So uh, the way that standards work is basically all the people involved in the standards say, I want to have this in there. Oh, I want to have that in there. Oh, no, let's put that in there. Uh, and eventually they put everything in there. So the result is there's a lot of legacy crypto in there, which is quite dangerous. Um, there's a lot of things which can go wrong. And because people couldn't really agree, it turned out to be a big uh, slanging match between uh, Google and Netflix, the key storage issue hasn't really been resolved. So there's still really nowhere to, to keep your key securely. That's been booted down the road to version 2.0, which in theory will have sexy things in it like smart card support and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and just to finish off, so at CryptoSense, we've written a little um, web crypto tracer. So what's that? It's a bit like a kind of ad blocker or a cookie uh, inspector for your browser. But what does it do? It, it watches all the usage of web crypto and tells you what is that application doing, uh, where's it stored its keys, what are the keys being used for. Uh, so it's useful for debugging and for deciding whether that little thing you're using really is secure. So you can fetch that off, off uh, GitHub. It's got a BSD license and play around with it. And that's all for me today. Thank you very much. Okay, so next, uh, next, next. Who's the next? Yeah, so just random. He he made it only in four minutes. So it's I will give maybe one retreat of my account for respecting <laughs> time next year. No, uh, no, I, I I will not play to this. I will. I, 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 let's say uh, Elian uh, and uh, so yeah. It will be Namsor, the fourth one. So come on, come on, some applause, guys, some applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we have two presenters. This, uh, to go on the next slide. Uh, okay, sure. And uh, one microphone. And, yeah. Hello. I'm Elian Carsona. Uh, I built Namzor. And 
Hi everyone, I'm Elena Rossini and we've been collaborating on Gender Gap Grader. So, from Elena's name, Elena Rossini, you might have guessed that she's from Italy and a lady. Names, in fact, are quite complex. Italian names are very diverse and reflect the diversity of Italy regions, Italian languages and dialects. And imagine that India has about 30 or more states, each of them being at least as complex as Italy. Um, so Namzor is about understanding the complexity of names internationally in all scripts. I got really excited about this project because it, it's about machine learning, data, linguistics, anthropology. I wasn't sure how it could be used. One way was to open an API. So we've, I built a simple API to recognize gender from names. For example, that Andrea Rossini is Italian male, Andrea Parker is female name, Anglo-Saxon, Jean Durieux is a French male, uh, Jean Weston is female. Another way to find how this could be useful was to meet people. And we met with Elena at the OECD forum uh, on, e, on a workshop about uh, women's networks and gender diversity. And Elena had ideas on how this could be useful in other ways. Yeah, so actually my work is a filmmaker. Um, I'm also a cinematographer and a producer. Um, I run a couple of websites that are about gender and diversity. Um, and when I met Elian at the OECD, I thought, what a tremendous opportunity to team up join creative forces and um, do something together that really combines our expertise. So an API and also I would say my expertise when it comes to creativity and also like the realm of activism and gender diversity. And um, I have to say I've been a filmmaker for about 10 years and I have come across a lot of stumbling blocks. There is a lot of sexism um, in film. Um, I would say the film directors are about 13% of like all filmmakers. Um, and when it comes to cinematographers, so people behind the camera, we're only 7%, we're like a minority. And so I thought, let's try a test. Let's do something together and maybe take a look at the IMDB. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the IMDB. Um, it's a website that is like a directory of essentially every movie ever made. Uh, and it lists like the crew, you know, from like uh, technical people as well as cast. And um, the IMDb has five million names. What we decided to do was to use that um, API that Elian created. And we found the statistics to be like even more staggering and shocking than what I originally thought. Um, as you can see on screen, and you can see also on our website, um, I would say that um, the movie industry is really male-dominated. And now you might wonder, why is this interesting for us here? Um, well, we've also looked at um, other industries, and that's like the goal of the gender gap grader, is essentially to um, raise awareness about the gender gap across different fields by using open data and analyzing archives that are open to everyone and seeing you know, um, what is like the gender breakdown. Um, and uh, I think like we live in a very exciting time uh, of transparency, uh, but also accountability. Um, there have been like a lot of tech companies that have been releasing like their data about their you know, employees and when it comes to diversity. And I think that we cannot address an issue unless we know that there is a problem. And um, it's really fascinating to look at, um, you know, like gender gap um, across all industries. And it might be important for like each and every one of you in this room. And Elian is gonna tell you why. Yes, in fact, I, I do believe and studies have shown that gender diversity as well as other diversities are uh, make companies and teams effective. And also, women are half um, 
your clients, half the world. Um, so what we've done is also we've opened this API and we've opened the tools as open data, as part activism to, uh, so that everyone can use this. You can use this in your company, you can use this in your field, and you can measure the gender gap where, in, where it counts for you. So there's two ways you can uh, participate. First of all, you can try the API or use the API. It's on my shape, one of the uh, uh, companies here, and it's also uh, on, the, on the website, and you can also follow gender gap greater for the, the next study that will come in January about women in science. Thank you very much. Well done with the timing. Well done with the timing. It's a, that was a, and it was speaking not too fast, but very good timing. So excellent. Um, da -da 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 -da. So Graham, that's it. Uh, no, uh, Ben, that's it. So you can put it on. Yeah, okay. Ben Longden that comes from Scotland for the conference. So warm applause for Ben Longden. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so this talk is about uh, building better hypermedia clients um, as inspired by the design of everyday things, um, which is uh, actually a book. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that in a second. Um, first of all, uh, my name is Ben. Um, that's me on Twitter, B. Longdon. I'm the CTO for a company in the UK called uh, Invica. Um, I'm also the uh, author and maintainer of a HAL uh, hypermedia format library uh, written in PHP. Uh, I've written uh, specs for uh, representing an error hypermedia format uh, called VND error, which is a JSON uh, format, and a work in progress for uh, embedding objects using, using HAL, and that's a, a, a proposal which I'm currently uh, creating called Zoom. Um, now, The Design of Every Th Everyday Things is a book uh, published in the late um, 80s, 1988, I think, um, by uh, Donald Norman. And he's, uh, Donald Norman is somebody who's kind of widely recognized as somebody who's very influential in the world of uh, design, usability engineering, and, uh, and cognitive science. Um, and actually, the, when reading through the book, there's actually a surprising number of things which we can look at about how people interact with any object in the world um, you know, and, and how that can apply to the design of software, in particular, uh, APIs uh, in a sort of client-server environment. In that book, I wanted to focus on one particular uh, concept which he has called uh, the gulfs of evaluation and execution. I'm going to tell you exactly what those things are. Um, so uh, I, went, uh, <laughs> I went online to, to have a look and see if I could find some kind of open licensed images from this book, and I couldn't find any. So I grabbed some paper and scribbled some stuff down and scanned it all in. So a few of these slides are now going to be handwritten and colored in, which was great fun for me last Friday. But um, So this is a representation of the world. Um, it's uh, frozen in time, um, and it's a, it's, so it's a representation of, a, of one single moment. Now, when we want to actually interact with that world and make a change to it, um, we go through uh, two processes, one of which, oops, one of which is um, evaluation on the left, the other is execution. So when we're going through the evaluation step, we are, we are going through a process of, um, evaluation, of, 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 percept, of perceiving the world as it is, we interpret the world, and we make an evaluation of the world. Once we've done that, we understand something about the world, and we, want to and we form a goal. 
when we form a goal, that means we're wanting to, we, we need to change something, we want to change something, so we decide, to, we decide to make that change. By that point, we've moved into the second of these gulfs, uh, the, the execution gulf, where we have an intention to change the world. We form a sequence of actions, and then we execute those actions, and we keep repeating that process. So you, if you think about it, that kind of applies to, uh, that, that applies to a lot of things. Um, I've kind of distilled those two things down into uh, to be something a little bit more applicable to, to, uh, to APIs, um, where we have the evaluation gulf, which is all about discoverability on the left-hand side. We then form a goal based on how discoverable that information is, and the execution is simply uh, changing state. So we can only actually perform that evaluation step if we can discover enough information about the state of the world. So execution is simply taking action to make something change. So the gulf of execution, as defined by Donald Norman, is this. Um, it's the difference between the intentions of the users and what the system allows them to do or how well the system supports those actions. The gulf of, the gulf of evaluation um, is the, it's the difficulty of assessing the state of the system and how well the artifacts support discovery and interpretation of that state. And a quote from, uh, from Donald again, um, or Don as he likes to be known as, um, is uh, it, it, he says the, the gulf is small when the system provides information about its state in a form that is easy to get, is easy to interpret and matches the way the person thinks of the system. So when we're building clients, Clients are primarily focused on making that gulf of execution as small as possible. We actually have to rely on good APIs to reduce that gulf of evaluation. The client can only work with the data from the API, the, the data that's actually been, been sent down to the client. Um, so if that data is bad, then that gulf is too wide, and we need to make recommendations to the, the implementers of the, uh, of the API to reduce the size of that gulf. So we can you know, give feedback to them and tell them how they can improve, how to make those messages more descriptive so that those two gulfs on either side can be as small as possible. Thank you. after we, we put we give all the prize to the developer uh, competition contest so it's a, a, approximately 10 minutes number of retweets will be the end of it so please no bots no automated thing actually we can see it and it will uh, cancel all this uh, all the stuff no actually we um, will not do that because you could do it for others uh, <laughs> so yeah so this is the word of software uh, this yeah everything is possible and uh, avoiding hacks is the is the is, is, is really is really hard. This is why we had talks on security. So everything is set up. It's on its way. You can ask people to to retweet and make some awareness. We are setting everything up. <coughs> Uh, it was two days. Uh, it was two days of great conference. So um, uh, uh, on the afternoon we had a developer speed hack. So three hours for integrating eight APIs. So eight challenges, uh, and we to to find who are the best API developers out there. Um, so when the conference will be three thousand people, we will say the best API developer of, of the world. Now we'll say of the region. We'll say just uh, the, the region. Uh, but yes, it's, it's really important. API integration is a big, a big challenge. So we, we really thank all the sponsors and the developers that participate to it. So please, some applause for the, all of them. Uh, 
I really hope developers you had uh, fun, uh, even uh, it was quite hot in, in the room <laughs> at, at one point. And I hope uh, sponsors, you will, you met great developers and, and you've seen a lot of d feedbacks about your platform and how developers integrate it. So Nicolas was in charge of Speedhack from 3Scale and from API Tools. So I will let uh, Nicolas uh, manage the, 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 prize, uh, the prize pool um, uh, delivery. So, yeah. Thank you, Mehdi. So, as, as Mehdi mentioned, uh, it was a great three hours of hard work for our developers. Uh, some have a knowledge about the APIs they had to integrate, some didn't, and so being able to solve a challenge, a, a technical challenge, in this short amount of time, it's a, a great, great skill. So, good job on the, for the hackers. Again, thanks to all the sponsors. Um, the speed hack is it's a new concept that we brought in uh, API Strategy Chicago. It's something that we come up with for the first time over there uh, that we tried and we loved. Uh, it gives opportunity to people to try new APIs, APIs to get discovered by uh, uh, hackers and maybe start a new community. So we've done this in uh, Chicago, we've done this in Paris, and I heard that there might be another API days in Berlin, so there might be another speed hack in Berlin. Be ready to hack with other APIs. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to call uh, Happy Days, Happy Days, Days, uh, for uh, their prize that they're giving away to the best hackers that use uh, their API. Round of applause for Happy Days. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers, Mehdi, Nicola, and Faber Novel. Um, so it was short but very intense, uh, so it was very useful for us and we thank all the developers. Um, the first and biggest winner is uh, Tiny Clue. Where is Tiny Clue? give you two and we would there was uh, there is a third one there is one developer we would like to uh, incentive because he had just like a, a little time problem uh, but he was on the right track and he's uh, Abdel Kader I think okay <laughs> Abdel Kader <laughs> okay and uh, also, um, I would like to announce that uh, uh, from now until the 14th uh, of December midnight, we are running with four other platforms, uh, web uh, RTC platforms, an online challenge which is called WebRTC Fest, F E S T, WebRTCFest.com. You can register, there will be a $5,000 uh, prize pot, and Parrot is uh, offering uh, as a sponsor also a huge uh, drone. So. Time to, to code again. Thank you. <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe. Cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, so those team won because uh, they integrate uh, Happy Days API quickly, and they were on the first one. You might be called for other prize. I don't know yet. Uh, but for now, go back to this, uh, the room. All right. So Happy Days had a prize, but uh, we also want to thank you, uh, Twitter. And uh, Romain, if you're in the room, please come on stage and uh, give up to your awesome prize. Uh, <laughs> they had the ability to try a new thing that you may have seen this morning, and Romain might talk about it. Cool. Thank you guys who participated into the challenge. Uh, great ideas. Uh, it was nice to see you uh, getting started with Fabric. And um, so a few of you uh, took the challenge. I would like to, uh, to think especially um, about drop table and I saw there would be Wi-Fi. Those two team names did like great work on both iOS and Android to get tweets displayed properly. But also Thibaut did great work uh, by himself with like uh, super hard challenges along the way. So I would like to uh, reward you all. And if you're part of a team who also uh, got a drone or something, uh, I got some mini drones from Parrot, but I also got some uh, Twitter hoodies and t-shirts. So uh, hopefully we can sort this out for you guys. So drop table, uh, I thought that would be Wi-Fi and Thibaut.
Cool. Yeah, Game of Thrones. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was very hard to uh, for them to code because uh, a lot of people were on the Wi-Fi a lot and working with APIs when you have a barely Wi-Fi working, it's pretty hard. And uh, maybe we can invent a local host APIs. Um, good job, guys, for winning the Twitter uh, challenge. All right. I would like to give a special mention to some of the team. Uh, they were called Les Chatons, uh, which means kitties. Uh, they were the, f the only team that uh, was coming with costume. We were giving extra points for costumes. So uh, good job on you guys. Uh, hopefully I will see you to another hackathon. Keep hacking. It was great. And also, we share the ears. So it's great. Um, now it's time to reward the global winners, the one that the teams that solve most of the challenges, if not all of them. Some people did that. Uh, so I would like to call two teams as their, uh, I would like to, to name two teams as they are uh, second and third job table that you have seen before. Good job on you for being second. Ex Execo with, Ex with Team Falafel. Good job, because I, saw, I didn't know that you were doing a, a talk after that, and you've been hacking hard, and now you give your talk after, so a big round of applause for you, man. It was great. <laughs> Come on stage. Um, so those two guys are the second. Execo, good job. Uh, I think we will have some stuff to give you after. Picture time, famous, uh, famous time. Uh, and then we're going to call the first one. So I would like to hear like some drumming. Some like suspense. Ooh. All right, all right. Who that might be? It's Tim Tiny Clues. Woo! They were, they were the, they were the first and the only team. I think the only team to solve all the challenges. Uh, so congrats on you guys. I think you have John, and uh, thanks to our sponsor, Urban Liquor. All right, so I guess they will have, in their office, they will have some uh, drone battles. Uh, have fun with it. Obviously, try to hack it the, r the way Roman is doing it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, this bit of hack. Thank you, uh, Mehdi, for the thing. So because uh, the, the first, no, no, so thank you. Because the, the, the first prize is, um, is given by Urban Linker. Yeah, so if you want to tell something and why did you sponsor that. And the guy of Octo. Which is here also, yeah, so if you come. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll be very, very quick. Uh, Urban Liquor, just in a nutshell, we are a web, agent web recruitment agency, uh, and we are very, very much dedicated to the French startup scene uh, and digital industry, globally speaking. So for us, it makes sense to be a, to be a sponsor or at least support such an event. And uh, I, I know the face of some of you guys. I'd like to congratulate you for, uh, for, the, um, for this session, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be there uh, next week to, to show our support to, to such events. Thank you very much. And also about Octo that give the, the cash prize in Amazon uh, tickets, in Amazon uh, coupons. Amazon coupons. Uh, hi guys, uh, congratulations. So I'm uh, Antoine from uh, Octo Technology, and uh, I'm very proud, very proud to uh, to give you this prize. Uh, I know it's very hard. Uh, Octo, we build many, many API, uh, O2 APIs. Uh, we love this, and uh, I know it's very hard challenge. So congratulations, guys, and uh, enjoy your coupons. So, so why why did we choose the sponsors? It's really hard to find uh, skills, to find uh, human resource in the API space. Finding great developers is hard, and we know that Urban Linkers is a great uh, human resource uh, um, uh, company, uh, helping uh, companies to find uh, to find developers that knows about APIs. And so we ch we really ask them to be sponsor. We 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 really want them to be sponsor. And even Octo. Uh, Octo, because a lot of companies publish APIs, and when they don't have human resource that the Urban Linker is able to provide, uh, they, they, take some, they can take consulting. So, and also Octo, com, Octo is able to provide this consulting with uh, customers. So we really wanted to have you both. So if you want to make things internally, Urban Linker can help you. 
about your PR program, and if uh, you prefer consulting, so Octo is there. So, uh, so we really want, we are really glad to have you, uh, to have you there uh, both uh, for this. And I hope you enjoyed as, as much as we enjoyed uh, receiving you guys. Uh, okay, hello. Uh, we are Tiny Cruise. Tiny Cruise is a so, uh, software solution of uh, predictive marketing, and uh, we are uh, doing uh, a lot of uh, sexy things uh, <coughs> uh, about, about uh, data. Uh, we have uh, an API, an hypermedia API, and uh, we are based in Paris, so uh, we are hiring uh, all kinds of uh, technical uh, profiles. So if you are a back-end engineer or even a front engineer, you can uh, contact us uh, on our website. Thank you. So, Tiny Clues is the hidden gem of the conference. They are a company, they are a startup, they won the developer challenge, they have a hypermedia API. Guys, come on, next year we have to do something with you, uh, with APIs for sure. You're the hidden gem of the conference. You should have come at the beginning, but it's okay, it's okay. So, really great to have you there. Uh, you want to say something more, Nicolas? Yeah, yes, this, and after I will make the last. Uh, so again, uh, uh, we're, I want to thank all the sponsors. We had uh, Context.io with Tony, uh, awesome talk during the, the conference, awesome sponsor all the time, supporting the speed hack since the, the first one. Syngrid uh, with Robin as well, they were here on the first one. Twitter, uh, last time in Chicago, this time in Paris again. Uh, we had API Days, we had uh, OSIO and uh, API Tools, and, uh, and the Mary de Paris. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> so it's, it was very nice to have uh, French companies and uh, good APIs too. So it's really about community. So now it's the time to see, oh, I have no more battery. So I need to check, I need to check. So number of retweets for number one. So I need to ask more. Okay, I, have, I don't have the number one, but it, it's fine. Yeah, number of retweets for number one, eight. Number of retweets for number two, one. And one favorite. <laughs> number of retweets for number three, num two. For number four, 35 and one favorite. And number five, fifth, 17. So it's the name soar and the gender gap that won the keynote. <laughs> You can still apply for talks for the, uh, for the others. <laughs> you want to say something? Do you, do you have an idea of the talks you will do next year? Um. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you work hard. We work very hard. Tell a story. Exactly. Might make a movie about this as well. Yeah, Ooh. show a little something. <laughs> but thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, well, just one thing, you can check also the other projects of uh, Elena, the, the Illusionists, uh, uh, really a beautiful project, so nothing to do with APIs, but maybe next year we'll have found a connection. We have a heart too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So I really want, so it's the end now. Thank you for things uh, uh, so late and with all this traffic you have to come back home and oh my god, Paris. <laughs> so I, I really want to thank uh, the other APIs organizers uh, that will, and the partners we'll have, so if you can come on stage too. Yeah, yeah, Manfred, Pili, Eduardo, Elena, so if you can come on stage. I will ask also the, the volunteers because without, uh, without them it would not have been possible. So some of them are already come back home because they were tired. I understand they volunteered. Uh, do, do we still have need, uh, some volunteers there? So come on stage, come on stage. And applause for them, please, thank you. Yeah, we, we really want to thank you in the name of all the volunteers that were there. And we really hope that you, uh, you had enough uh, feedback from the conference, from the content that you helped us. And really thank you because it would not have been possible uh, without you helping us. So thank you very much.
and now I want the, the company thanks to uh, thanks to uh, okay my English my Frenglish is, is coming back <laughs> the, the, the company that re that helped me to to learn, to go in EBI space to organize a conference they co-founded the conference with me they I I I, I had just uh, email list when I ask speakers to to join but without their organization their knowledge and their business uh, thinking about the uh, open innovation digital transformation it, we would never have scaled the conference like that this is Faber Novel they had a, a booth on the on the on the on the first floor so if the Faber Novel team can come I have pretty, pretty much nothing to add. Uh, thank you all for being here, for still being alive after two hard days. Uh, we, it was a great pleasure to, to have you all uh, around us. I promise that uh, next year we're going to go over 1,000 people together in Paris. And, uh, <laughs> And we will uh, keep on rocking APIs. Thank you all. He said 1,000, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a partner. We need to discuss a lot of things. But he said 1,000. Uh, <laughs> you said it. Uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, thank you all. We used to, make, to take a photo with all the last attendees, but now I think we're too much. So maybe we'll, c can we take a photo on, on the river side, on the other side? Yeah, can we can we take it? Can we make a photo with everybody? I want everybody on a photo with everybody here is possible. Okay, so I will ask everybody to come. So you have no excuse, no excuse to not come. Can can we put the 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 sponsors out? Don't escape, don't escape. Les grands derrière, les grands derrière. Assis devant. Assis debout. On peut s'asseoir sur les marches aussi, en fait. Il reste des places sur les marches. Il reste des places sur les marches. On veut voir le maximum de gens. Le maximum de gens. Cette conférence, c'est pour réunir les, les hommes. Voilà. Si vous pouvez descendre un petit peu. On a fait cette conférence pour que les gens puissent se voir entre eux et pour mettre des visages sur les emails, des visages sur les, euh, sur les, tweet, les Twitter feeds. Combien, combien de gens j'ai rencontrés Je n'avais vu que, que sur Twitter. Oh, sorry, I speak French. Oh, my God. Now, how many people, how many people have met only by email, only by Twitter feed? I knew only their photo. And Nicolas, for example, Nicolas Grenier has a... It's not you on your Twitter feed. So I never recognized you. I've met you maybe 10 times. I'd say, do you know this Nicolas Grenier? Yeah, it's you. So yeah, so it was crazy. So I think, yeah, we see every face. We see everybody's face. Yeah, let's take a photo. Big smile, API, and, <laughs> and, and, and it will be great. Thank you so much for everybody, for everything, for attending, and let's make, let's make this rock next year. We take a photo, maybe a few. You take a few of them, and... Yeah, 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 I will look at you, of course. <laughs>